Hi everyone, Dr. Shook here. I hope you're doing well today. And in today's live stream, what I want to talk to you about is how does LDN help autoimmunity? And if you don't know what LDN is, it is low-dose naltrexone. Now, uh, naltrexone is used to help people with opiate withdrawal, okay? But in low doses, it does some pretty unique things to uh, to help the immune system. So I want to kind of give you a little bit of background information on the immune system itself so you'll have a little bit of an understanding through the mechanism that LDN works. Now I'm not advocating for LDN and I'm not saying that LDN is a bad thing. I am just simply want to share with you some of these mechanisms as I understand them so that you can be better informed on what it is, how it works, and you know, if you're using it, if you're considering using it, some of the things that you want to you want to look at and, and consider, you know, when you're making that decision. Because, you know, in my opinion, the ultimate and the the um, the goal is to help people to get healthy without having to use medications and and other things if possible, right? So to try to help to support their body naturally to be healthy. Um, Every, you know, I think that every tool that's available should always be considered, right? Should always be considered to help people live the best life possible. So I want to talk about LDN a little bit and, uh, and highlight some of the mechanisms through which it works so that you can get a better idea of whether or not that's something that you, uh, that you maybe want to consider or maybe some things that might be missed that, uh, that need to be considered in your case, right? So let's, let's kind of walk through this. So the first step to understand is that the immune system is made up of different groups of cells. Now we're going to be really simplified here in this explanation, but if we imagine that this, what you see here is a seesaw, and here in the center, this is the fulcrum, and on the left side you have Th1 cells, which are killer cells, that's a group of cells that the immune system makes, they're called T helper 1 cells, or killer cells. And then on the other side of the seesaw, you have T helper 2 cells or B cells. B cells produce antibodies. In the center, you have this fulcrum that allows and, and helps the, the balancing of the seesaw is T helper 3 cells or the regulatory cells. The regulatory cells, they help to orchestrate the shift in these cells, which is normal, but it should come back to a balanced a balance between the two sides. Now, let's say you're exposed to a bacteria. Your immune system responds by, let's say, shifting a greater number of killer cells initially. These killer cells go, they fight the bacteria, they kill it. Then your, um, the shift goes maybe towards the Th2 side where your body makes, your immune system makes antibodies that helps you to have immunity against this exposure in the future. And then after that occurs, it shifts back to balance. Okay, that would be a normal, uh, an example of a normal immune response. So with autoimmunity, we often find that people have polarization of the immune system. The immune system is not balanced. It's not, it does not come back to this state. There's a Th1 or a Th2 dominance. And the question, really the ultimate question is why is this occurring? Why is there, is there something that's actively stimulating the immune response that the body can't get rid of, like a chronic infection? Uh, you know, a, a chronic um, reactivity to food proteins? Are there, are there chemicals that are stimulating an immune response? You know, is there, is there, are there, are there lack of vitamins and minerals that are essential to help the body? And, and I should also say antioxidants that are essential for regulatory function and balancing the immune system. So there's really two things that have to be considered when you look at this. Is there something actively stimulating the immune system or is there just a lack of of immune system regulation. Can the immune system not self-regulate and balance itself, right? Can the T3 system, can it, can it not um, balance the Th1 and Th2 systems? And it does this, the Th3 system helps with that balancing. That's, that's its job, it's regulatory, regulates Th1, Th2, okay? But you've gotta consider, let me make some notes here because this is really, really important. When you're seeing this shift, you've gotta consider one, is there, is there a problem with, and we're going to call it active, antigen. So is there something that's actively stimulating the immune, the immune system, and this is the normal response. But maybe for some reason, it's, let's say it's a chronic infection. or let's say maybe that you're eating foods that you're reacting to. Uh, maybe you have intestinal permeability, so let's say it's foods. 
or let's say that you're lo you've lost immune system tolerance to chemicals. Okay, so this is one, one scenario where this might be polarized. You, I'm, everything that we're going to talk about, it does not, the, the way that LDN works will not change this. Okay, this is something that has to be looked at completely by itself. The LDN will not change this. Okay, now the second scenario, and since I don't really have a lot of room, we're going to erase this. Okay, the second scenario is why this might be occurring, right? This shift, this polarization might be because there is poor regulatory, let's just say, poor regulatory function. So the TH3 system is not working to balance the cells properly. And so why is that? And that's where we go into step two of our story. Okay, so regulatory function. So this is step two. Now the TH3 system, the regulatory cells here, they are primarily influenced by three major categories. Opioids influence them. Now opioids, the body makes endorphins. Those are natural opioids that the body makes. Okay, Opioids have an impact on the regulatory T cells. Vitamin D helps with regulatory T cell function. That's why when you're autoimmune, vitamin D is so critical because without adequate vitamin D, you will not have a good regulatory T cell response. So you can't, you can't um, properly balance and regulate these immune cells okay, that are being produced. The third thing is glutathione. It's an antioxidant. Okay, it's the master antioxidant of the body. It helps with regulatory T cell production as well. If you're deficient in glutathione, if you're deficient in vitamin D, and if you do not have adequate endorphins or natural opioids, you have a poor regulatory T cell response. And it makes you have poor, that, that results in poor regulatory function of the immune system. So if you have poor regulatory function of the immune system, you're more likely to have dysregulation and, and autoimmune uh, based symptoms or an immune system that is, does not behave normally. Okay, let's, let's put it that way. So this is pretty important, right? This would, you agree this would be pretty important. Now this is where LDN comes into play. So LDN, what it does is uh, it, ultimately what it does is it helps to stimulate, it helps to stimulate OGF or opioid growth factor. Now that sounds a lot like this, doesn't it? Opioids. So it helps to stimulate your body makes, every cell makes opioid growth factor. Um, opioid growth factor, what it does is it regulates growth of cells and helps balance the immune response. Okay, it sounds pretty favorable if you're autoimmune. Now, the way that it works though, is that, um, that LDN, the way that it works is it binds. So your body produces this OGF, opioid growth factor. Opioid growth factor will attach itself to a receptor on the cell. It's like a little docking, little docking spot on the, on the cell. And you have a lot of them on the surface of the cell. And, and it, um, it binds to it, and that is, that's the mechanism through which it works, okay? And then it, it helps to regulate the growth of cells and the immune response, and, and this, is the, this is the mechanism here, okay? Uh, through which some of these natural endorphins help to stimulate the regulatory T cell response, all right, and, and regulate cell growth, all right? So opioid growth factor attaches to this receptor. It helps to regulate the immune response and the growth of cells, okay? The way that LDN works is that LDN, or, or naltrexone at a low dose, it has to be a low dose, we'll explain why, but naltrexone, it binds to this receptor, okay, it binds to the receptor on the cell, temporarily stimulating what? Opioid growth factor production, because anything that binds to that receptor will stimulate the mechanism within the cell, which is to produce opioid growth factor. Or, or I should say it helps with it regulates the growth of the cells in the immune response. Okay, it, it, will, it will help with the mechanisms that stimulate the, the regulation of the growth of cells in the immune response when the LDN binds okay, to the receptor. Um, what this does, the, what, what ends up happening is that LDN binds itself. And when it binds itself, it's metabolized after a few hours. That's why it has to be at a low dose. If it was at a high dose, it would bind to the receptor for a long period of time. But as, when it's bound for a short period of time, what it does is it increases the OGF receptors, so the opioid growth factor receptors. So remember, on the cell, you've got these little receptors. 
uh, when the LDN binds to it and it starts to take them up, the cell says, hey, I need to have, um, I need to have, I need, I need to be stimulated. We need this stimulation. I'm not getting the stimulation from the LDN. So there are more receptors pop up on the surface of the cell. Then the, the cell, the, the receptors, those little receptors that are there, not only are there more, but now they're more sensitive. And then the, the body goes, you know what, we need, we need um, opioid growth factor. So we, we have to pump out. So what it does, the body starts pumping out more opioid growth factor in the short term, right? Now, once the body metabolizes the LDN and it stops blocking the receptor, you now have, you now have increased opioid growth factor receptors. Okay, so you have more receptors. You have greater sensitivity. All the receptors are now more sensitive to the opioid growth factor. And now you have increased opioid growth factor. The LDNs metabolized away. Now the receptors are available. They're all available now. Let's just say all available for the opioid growth factor to attach itself and stimulate the benefit of regulating growth of cells and immune response. Natural opioids, which are endorphins, stimulate and help regulate the immune response help to balance the Th1 and Th2 systems. Okay, does that, does that make sense? So uh, I was a little, that, I hope that explanation wasn't too confusing. Um, the main thing to understand here is that LDN attaches itself to this opioid growth factor receptor, blocking it, okay? The body responds when, that, when, those, when those receptors are blocked by increasing the number of receptors because it needs that stimulatory effect. So you get more receptors on the cells, then you have increased sensitivity. The, the receptors become more sensitive. They're feeling, they're, they're, they're more receptive, receptive to opioid growth factor, okay? And then your body says, you know what? We're gonna ramp up the production of opioid growth factor so that we can get this stimulatory effect. Then the LDN's metabolized. It's no longer blocking the receptor. So now you have all these receptors open and available for OGF, produ for, for OGF, OGF um, attachment. And they're more sensitive. And so you have a greater effect on the regulatory growth of cells and immune response. <laughs> okay, so you get you're, you're stimulating this portion of the regulatory mechanism. Okay, this portion. So if you're optimizing vitamin D, you've got good glutathione, and you have you know you have um, good opioid or opiate endorphin uh, in, endorphin effects on on the, um, the body you're gonna get, or on the TH3 system, you're gonna, you, it, theoretically, you're gonna have a better, a better uh, regulatory response here, so the cells will balance better. But you've gotta keep in mind, there's multiple mechanisms that influence this T3, TH3 system. So when I look at this, I think, okay, um, how can we produce endorphins naturally? Exercise, laughter, happiness, love, good relationships, social interaction, a lot of things that we can do, okay? A lot of things we can do. Is vitamin D properly regulated? Do we have high, good, high levels of vitamin D? Typically, we shoot for 70, blood serum levels of 70. You know, the lab ranges in the U.S. are 30 to 100. Uh, glutathione, are your glutathione levels good? A lot of people have very low glutathione levels, which, which help with this function. Now, help with this regulatory function. Now, guys, this is only one part of the story. This is regulatory function, which is very important. But don't forget what I said, step one, or the first thing that can drive this response and, and have you kind of stuck in a state of polarization is that you have something that your body's reacting to, a food, an infection, uh, a, a chemical, okay? Now, if you are reacting to one of those things, your, your body may need this polarization. It may need this shift because it's trying to kill or get rid of something. So maybe rather than trying to, you know, you wanna make sure you have adequate regulatory function here, but you don't want to suppress this process naturally from occurring, right? So maybe what you need to do is look at the entire picture and not just the regulatory portion. This is the step two, the regulatory portion. Remember step one or the, the major, the first step was why is the immune system doing this in the first place? Can we evaluate and determine why that is? And, and then if you can address, you can identify foods you're reacting to, pathogens that you're, you might be reacting to, which are bacteria, uh, uh, you know, parasites, 
uh, viruses, fungal infections, stealth pathogens, those types of things, then, then you, can, uh, you can identify what you're reacting to and you can put together a strategy to remove that so that the immune system can come back down and be balanced. Now you do want to look at things like this to make sure that you can have a normal regulatory response, but if you were taking a lot of vitamin D and you were really pushing the system, you might suppress this response. You, it, it might, it might um, you just want to make sure that everything is in balance. You don't want to necessarily just push this pathway because you can. You, you want to like look at what's happening and actually have a strategy to address the cause of the problem. A lot of this stuff is, you know, without considering the factors driving the immune response, you know, LDN is, is, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's just, it's, you don't really know why you're doing it, right? Why is the immune response happening? There needs to be further investigation, if that makes sense. I'm not saying if you're taking it, it's a bad thing or any of that. That's, I just want to, I just want to share with you the mechanisms that, you know, how I see this. And I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I think it's helped a lot of people and a lot of, a lot of people take it long term. As far as I can tell there, you know, I've, from my research I've done, there's no negative side effects to it. It's at a very low dose. So, you know, there's just a lot that needs to be considered with autoimmunity. So I just wanted to share this with you. I hope this makes some sense. I hope I didn't confuse you too much with this piece. Uh, but that's the mechanism through which it works. But you've always got to ask yourself, why is this happening in the first place? Am I just taking supplements or vitamins or things and I don't really know why I'm taking them? Like what's the factor, what are the factors driving it? So number one, you know, what, what are the active things that are actively stimulating the immune response and promoting, promoting the immune response that could be contributing to the autoimmunity in the first place? Foods, pathogens, chemicals, okay? This piece, which is the regulatory uh, piece, the immune regulatory piece is important, but why is the immune system responding this way? is the adaptive state that you see if you're in if you're polarized one way or the other is that just the body trying to shift like if you have high th1 high th1 high killer cells is your body trying to kill something is it trying to kill is it trying to kill a bacteria that's that's chronic that you don't know about that has actually suppressed the immune system so your blood work doesn't look like you don't have high white blood cells is that what's happening because you know that would be that's something that'd be important to find, don't you think? Because what if we could remove that? Then maybe the immune system could calm back down. And yeah, we want to look at these things, but it's the big picture, right? It's the big picture. Listen, if you have autoimmunity, or if you're dealing with thyroid-related issues, Hashimoto's, Graves, um, if you're you know if you're if you're dealing with with these problems, and you know you're you feel frustrated or you're stuck or you want a third opinion or you know someone to assist with your team. I always like to work in teams with, with doctors and, and, and as a partner with the, the, my clients that I work with, you know, I can help you to look at your case and try to give you another perspective. You know, I don't dictate anything, I just try to give you my perspective. If you need help, what you can do is you can go to newthyroidconsult.com and you can, you can learn all about working with me as a distance consulting client. I work with people around the world and across the United States to help them try and figure out what's driving their symptoms and the problems that they're having. And you know, this is, one of the things that we have to consider. I know it's a lot to kind of wrap your head around sometimes, but uh, that's why we've tried to make as many videos for you as we can so that you can ultimately try to help yourself. But if you do need help and you would like my opinion, I'd be happy to talk to you and see if I can't help you, you know, maybe look at this a slightly different perspective, give you an idea on some of the strategies that you might be able to utilize to, you know, support, you know, support this from my perspective and maybe we can, we can, uh, we can work together to help you get your health back. But I do appreciate you guys. I hope this has been informative, not too confusing. And I really uh, look forward to um, talking to you guys again soon. Thanks.